getting the elephant to dance, uh, how do you drive uh, digital and analytic success for large organizations? I've been working in this space for the last perhaps 20 years uh, you know, with McKinsey, where I set up analytics, Fidelity, uh, then with Flipkart, which is an e-commerce company, and then with the last year and a half with my firm in Cedo, where we are working with a number of Fortune 100 companies. Answer is very difficult, very difficult. So over the last, uh, uh, last day and a half, you know, we have had a lot of conversation about the power of data and how inspired and uh, potent you know, we feel around it. Uh, you know, my submission, my experience is that the opportunity with data and analytics, you know, what it could mean for the business, what it could mean for organizations, and what organizations are actually achieving, you know, what is it that you can do uh, to realize a lot more of that impact. Okay, so here's the good news, and I'll use the words digital and analytics somewhat interchangeably. I see data, analytics, and digital as like three intersecting Venn diagrams. Analytics to me is a lot more the input, uh, and digital to me is a lot more the business output. So, you know, I, I see digital as a slightly broader uh, kind of, you know, frame, but use these terms interchangeably. Now, the good news is, the good news is that um, the digital kind of wave is totally here to stay. Uh, so organizations, you know, every large enterprise that I know of, uh, is spending massively behind digital transformation initiatives. Uh, you know, some data that we have seen suggests that over the next couple of years, two trillion dollars of spend on digital transformation. That's massive, massive, massive. Yeah. So, you know, there is a very. This is a big. It's not just a wave. This is a tsunami. Uh, the bad news is, the bad news is that majority of them fail, or at the very least, do not realize their full objectives. Yeah, so some uh, research suggests that 70% of uh, these projects don't realize their potential. So on a $2 trillion, $2, $2 trillion spend, that's $1.4 trillion. So that's a lot of money down the drain. So while there's a lot of excitement around spending the money and you know, big kind of build outs, uh, but you know, when you look at the boardroom and um, you know, in, in my last two organizations, you know, where, you know, where I was in those conversations, I think at the boardroom level, uh, you know, sometimes there are very challenging questions. And it's, you feel that you have to spend this money, uh, but what you are getting out of it uh, is often not clear. So what is happening? Why is this? Why is this? Um, so I, I think there is both a failure of vision and a failure of execution. I think it's a bit of a double whammy. Uh, failure of vision, uh, most initiatives tend to be very incremental, tend to be very incremental, and often it is about what you are doing offline, taking that online, yeah, uh, without really changing, you know, the underlying customer is changing, but, you know, you're not really, you know, factoring that, yeah, and I think underlying this, especially in large organizations, is this great fear of self-cannibalization. There is this great fear of self-cannibalization that, hey, we have been doing this, you know, we are making good money, so what's the problem? Yeah, so, uh, but, you know, we know how that plays out. So there is a failure of vision, but even more so, and even more damning, I think, is the failure of execution. Is the failure of execution, yeah? And I would say this is like, 2080, you know, I, I think it's very energizing to talk about vision, but I would say that 20% failure of vision and 80% is actually the failure of execution. What is happening? Often there is, a, there is a gap between business alignment. We say that, you know, we are very connected, but there's actually a gap uh, in the business alignment and, you know, what you are working on is that really the biggest strategy, you know, strategic priority uh, for the company, or is it you know one of those more minor, pro minor minor issues on which you are focused? Yeah. So there's a gap of business alignment. There is a lack of end-to-end -end implementation. The nature of digital analytics is that it's 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 cross-functional, but the way organizations are structured, uh, it makes it very difficult to drive it end-to-end. -end. So between the business the data or analytics and the technology execution, there are often very serious gaps. 
going big bang. As technologists, you know, we like to do big things because it makes a big statement and it also is big spend. Yeah? Uh, but the nature of digital analytics is that it is iterative. It is iterative. If you go big bang, the opportunity for learning, which is very necessary for successful digital analytics execution, you narrow that. And you actually set yourselves up to fail big. And finally, required talent. You know, there has been discussion on talent. Uh, the, see, it's the talent that you actually need um, and you know, what legacy enterprises are able to attract. There is a big gap, and often it goes down to culture. That the best talent you know, is your organization. Does it have the culture to really make it interesting for that really high quality talent to be part of your organization? So these are some challenges that we see. You guys agree? Yes, no? Yes? Yeah? <clears throat> what is happening? Why is this? So my view is that underlying this are actually some very significant changes that are happening. The world around us is changing. It's changing very significantly. And unless you factor in the big changes that are happening, the solutions that you will throw up will not be different will not be different. So you have to, I think a lot of the discussion, a lot of the way we approach things is still very superficial, is hitting at symptoms. Yeah, I think there is a need to go deeper and look at some of the, the underlying kind of big changes that are happening. There are, there are six big changes that are happening. We know them, but I'll still kind of lay them out. Customer, the customer is younger, is a lot more demanding, has a lot more options is there is a lot more pricing transparency. And I think that's a very big, that's a very big thing. Most businesses, you know, if you are a traditional business, you probably made money because of lack of pricing transparency. Yeah. And with the, with the internet, that goes away. Yeah. So that's a very big challenge for the business. How do you deal with that? The other big thing is disintermediation. You know, my view is that there is nothing called a B2B business anymore. Any business is now you know, B2C, or at the least it's B2B to C, yeah, because technology is driving disruption of value chains at a frightening pace. So customer is different. Data, we know this. The volume, you know, volume variety, velocity of data is unprecedented. That's a great opportunity for somebody who can harness it. But most times, if you're a large organization, and Jay, I think in the morning you talked about the velocity, uh, and I could really relate to it, you can get submerged. It can drown you. It, will, it can totally immobilize you. <clears throat> so how do you deal with data? Fast changing. The velocity of change, you know, whether it's on technology or on the business side, is frightening. Is frightening, yeah? So new competitor, totally, coming up all the time, uh, a partner becoming a competitor, a competitor becoming a partner, industry structures changing. So the speed is, so speed is king. The speed of execution now needs to be of a very different order of magnitude than before. Technology driven, we know this. The role of technology changing from being a support function, managing the data center, to actually being the business. Easier said than done. How do you build the technology DNA? Iterative, I talked about it. You know, when, when I was growing up as a management consultant, you know, we were taught right first time. Right first time. Right first time does not exist anymore. It doesn't exist anymore. And finally, cross-functional. The problems cannot be boxed. They're interdisciplinary. So these are six fundamental changes that I think are happening. And you need to really reflect on them, that, you know, what does it mean? So given this, there are these five rules, you know, which I would recommend to you. Five rules that, you know, if you want to drive disproportionate value from your digital and analytics um, transformation initiatives, these are five things that you need to think about. The first is rethink the business model. Start with that. How is your customer changing? How is your industry value chain likely to disrupt? That has to be the starting point. And therefore, what does it mean for your business model? That is the starting point. And there, 
the, the ability, the courage to self-cannibalize, I think for large companies, you know, that is going to be a very, very, uh, very important factor. Obsessive focus on business and customer outcomes. What do I mean by this? See, with digital and analytics projects, you know, what I find is that they can get very diffused. What problem you're solving, you may start with problem A, but as you, as you kind of learn, as you evolve, it ends up being problem X, yeah? It kind of keeps on shifting. So how do you make sure that you are, the problem you're solving is material? You know, it has to be, it has to be anchored in the business KPIs and it has to have a very close linkage you know, with you know, the p and of, of your firm. You know, if it is not impacting the p and of the firm in a fundamental way, uh, what really, are we, what really are, we, are we really doing here? Harnessing the power of data, I think this group knows it very well, so I'll not emphasize it. Integrate it into an approach. Of course, you need to connect the customer experience layer, the data layer, and technology. But the big challenge here of making that happen is actually the organization. And that's something that I would submit to you, that uh, if I look at what is holding back impact, what is holding back impact, I think the first thing is here. Are we really solving the biggest business problems? And I think the second thing is really here, point number four, that the big bottleneck is not technology. We have spent a lot of time over the day and a half talking about technology solutions and data infrastructure solutions, but I don't think that's a big bottleneck. The big bottleneck is really organization structures and organization processes. How do you, how do you work them? And finally, what I call two-speed implementation. And we had this discussion at the round table. Uh, I see organizations kind of being caught at two extremes. You know, one is big infrastructure build-outs, where you can lose sight of what really is the business problem you're solving, or a thousand flower bloom, uh, where you have a lot of micro use cases you know, that you end up spending time on. And my submission is that you need a two-speed approach, which is focus on, on the use cases, start with that, but as you, are, as you are implementing the use cases, you progressively build your data and technology platform. If you build your data and technology platform in isolation or in a vacuum, the chances of success are limited. Yeah? These are five rules that I want to submit to you. Very quickly, double click on them. So rethink the business model, and this here I've taken an example from the retail industry uh, where I spent a lot of time. So you know, often you know, when uh, analytics, you know, you're looking to solve for KPIs you know, around growth or, or conversion or, or NPS experience, what you end up focusing on is your website. That okay, what should we, how should we think about that? And you know, my submission is that look, that's only maybe 10% of the picture. There's only 10% of the picture. You need to look at all the business levers. You know, what's your offering? What's the product? What's the pricing? What's the promotion? What's the delivery? You, of course, your experience and your marketing mix. You need to rethink. You need to rethink each of these levers and also the building blocks. Also the building blocks. And, and I think an aspect you know, which I find critical for many of my large clients is the omni-channel strategy. Is the omni-channel strategy that what do you do, what is online, what is physical, and what is the relationship between the two, yeah? So rethink the business model, and that is on a number of dimensions. So key aspect of this is the omni-channel strategy, and I, and I kind of mentioned this because in my experience, as you rethink your business model, that is perhaps one of the biggest opportunities, but also often one of the biggest missed opportunities. Yeah. How do you, how do you interact with the customer? Yeah. Either I find situations where organizations are too conservative and too risk averse to move from their traditional physical channels because they have this fear of losing share, or I find organizations moving too quickly to the digital channel and therefore not fully leveraging the deep relationships they may have. Yeah? 
Omnichannel decisions are not easy. They are complex decisions because there are a lot of trade-offs. There is a trade-off between channels. There is a trade-off between business KPIs. You may have a channel where the cost of acquisition is low, but the churn may be high. The churn may be high. So this is a brilliant analytical analytics problem. Omnichannel strategy is a core, core analytics problem, but very, I have not seen too many examples of organizations driving the strategy and the decisions based on data. Often it is driven through philosophy. <clears throat> the KPI tree, I talked about it, this anchor, anchor your, your program on business KPIs. Yeah, and it is almost, you know, it has to start from your P&L and your market valuation, break that down, and then look at, you know, benchmarking of what are the, the KPIs where you're weak, yeah, which you need to focus on. Harnessing the power of data, uh, you know, this group is very familiar with it. You know, what I would say is that, look, you know, the way I look at it is that there are some building core building blocks that need to be put in place. So I look at these seven building blocks, data quality, core analytical models, AI ML implementation, A-B testing. I, I find that to be, a, at least to me, that's the secret sauce. That's the secret sauce, you know, where often uh, there is a big gap between the digital natives and the large enterprises. For digital natives, A-B testing and continuous experimentation is a way of life. Uh, whereas for large organizations, they tend to be a week, relatively weaker, weaker in that. Front-to-back integration, we talked a little bit, a bit about it. The need to connect the different layers, the customer experience layer, the, the engagement layer, the analytics layer, and data. How do you connect it? And again, in large organizations, you know, I find uh, this to be a big challenge. But the issue is really organizational. The issue in doing this is really organizational. That you know, how do you how do you really link together the organization? Yeah, how do you break silos and link the organization? You know, there are different models which organizations are following. There are three models, you know, which I see organizations using the project-based teams of getting teams together from different functions. It works, but then the the main alignment of the of the professionals tends to be with their parent function. So in the moment there is a conflict, you revert back to type. Creating a dedicated digital function works, but you, know, you still have the CIO organization, you still have the CMO, uh, and it, the digital function ends up being like, you know, if not managed right, can end up being a bit of a staff function. Can end up being a bit of a staff function, you know, without a real authority. What I'm now seeing, and I find that to be very encouraging, is that some large organizations are now totally restructuring themselves into the product structure. I think a big difference between the digital natives and the large organizations is how they are structured. The digital natives have more, more naturally organized around the product structure, where the product manager is the integrator. Yeah? Uh, and the, the large organizations typically have a functional structure. This I see organizations now taking the courage, having the courage to change this. My ex firm Fidelity has, at least for a large part of their business, they have recently gone through a massive restructuring where the entire 8,000 people organization was restructured into, into pods. Yeah, so one day, all 8,000 people were told that you don't have a job, here is a new kind of pod-based organization, and you have to now reapply uh, for these jobs. Very interesting, you know, I never thought that a firm this, this kind of conservative would, would go through that. Some other organizations are, are taking a different view. So <clears throat> one of the large, largest telecom operators in this country who's also a client of mine. So, so th their big challenge is that they are not able to really, uh, they have lost out on, on kind of attracting the millennials. So for that, they have created a new brand and almost a totally new and separate organization structure because they felt that in their large kind of organization structure, they will not be able to move with the velocity that is required. <clears throat> Coming to my fifth point, which is the two-speed strategy, uh, what happens is, what I see happening in the large enterprises is that they start late, and then everybody wants to be a Google. Yeah? 
and everybody has this dream of uh, all singing, all dancing data lake, you know, which will be a great source of discovery of, of fantastic insights, you know, which will totally reshape the business. Um, the, 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 the issue is that Google got there in like 10 years, you know, with their technology capability and their talent and culture. So for a legacy enterprise to get there in like a year or two years, you're only setting yourself up for failure. Yeah, and I think sometimes you know we as technology providers also don't do the cause or do the cause a disservice because we are so focused on selling like this great solution which will solve everything that I think we may end up adding to the problem. So my strong recommendation is what I call the two-speed strategy that start with select use cases flowing from your business KPIs which allow you to solve problems end to end, end to end across the layers and which deliver real impact. As you do multiple use cases, your data platform will grow, and then you get to a critical mass. You start getting to a critical mass where data can be a source of discovery. Where data can be a source of discovery, but to start with saying that my data platform will be a source of discovery is very difficult. As analytics professionals, that's our dream. That's what we want to do, that give us a lot of data and we will be able to figure out patterns uh, from it. But in reality, that's a very difficult thing. So let me stop here. Um, so I want to bring things together. Look, it's a massive, massive opportunity. Having been in this space for 20 years, you know, I now feel that it's all coming together. I think data, digital, analytics is now poised for massive impact. I think it's a 2050x impact that I think is possible from what we are doing today. Uh, I think this will be the core driving the enterprise of the future, but for that, many things need to be different. Many things need to be different. It needs to be an end-to-end -end transformation, starting by rethinking the business models, obsessive focus on the business outcome, uh, harnessing the power of data and analytics, uh, integrated end-to-end -end approach, and then the two-speed implementation. And with that, Carpe Diem, seize the day, my friends. <laughs>